Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. This is the second of two videos in this section that relate to the idea of factoring trinomials with a leading coefficient of one. If you haven't realized it yet, you're soon going to realize that factoring polynomials is incredibly important in algebra. It's used to solve equations, it's used to solve inequalities, it's used to graph functions. Many, many different things. And so being really good at factoring is super important to being successful in college algebra. The reason we have a second video here is I just thought it would be nice to see a few extra examples. This one is listed second. The one that's listed first is really the one you should watch first. The one I'm about to do, this, this one here, uses numbers that are a little bit uglier and shows a couple little quirky twists. Um, and so I want you to watch this one second. Remember that uh, in the first video, they gave you a really nice hint that to factor a trinomial with the leading coefficient of one, which would look like this, uh, the b and the c in this expression refer to integers, so there'd be specific integers. If this can factor, what you want to do is you want to look for two numbers that multiply together to get you c and that add together to get you b. We're going to jump straight into an example and explore again how this works. But again, looking at some numbers that are just a little bit bigger and some other little strange things you'll see along the way too. So I'm going to start by factoring x squared minus 4x minus 32. Now, According to the hint, what we'd be looking for is two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 32 and add together to give me negative 4. Now, if that happens to be obvious what that is to you, just wonderful for you. You are basically done. But let's be methodical in case it doesn't just jump right out at you. When we talk about looking for numbers that multiply to give me negative 32, I'm looking for the factors of negative 32. And I need those factors to add up, excuse me, to a sum of the b, in this case that would be negative 4, sum of negative 4. Now I can be a little strategic about this. Let me in this video sort of give you some things that I look for. Because my c my neg is negative, that tells me that I've got to have, in my choices for factors, one negative number and one positive number. Now, one of those numbers is likely to be larger in absolute value than the other. If the middle term is negative, what you would hope for is for the number that is larger in absolute value to be negative. If the, if the C were negative and the B were positive, you would want, again, a positive number and a negative number, but you'd want the one that's larger in absolute value to be positive. Now, being methodical, I'd like to start with the smallest integer that I can think of, and that would be a one. So I ask myself, one times what would give me negative 32? Well, one and negative 32 would give me a product of negative 32. Those are factors of negative 32. And as you can see, the number that is larger in its absolute value is the one that I'm making negative. So I choose those two numbers and then I ask myself, okay, well, what happens when I add those two? Because ideally, you want that to give you a sum of negative 4, but this is going to give me a sum of negative 31. Oh, that's way off. So that is not the right combination. No problem. What you do next is you just say, well, how about 2? 2 times what gives me negative 32? And that would be negative 16. 2 times negative 16 would give me a negative 32. So those are factors of negative 32. Again, the one that's larger in absolute value I chose to be negative. And I add those together and see if that gives me a negative 4, but it gives me a negative 14. 
Oh, uh, that's not right. We just keep going. Three, you look at three, but you say, you know what, does three, um, is three a factor of 32? Does three divide into 32 without a remainder? It does not. So we don't really have an option of using three as a, fa a factor. <clears throat> well, okay, no big deal. We'll just go up to four. Does four, is four a factor of negative 32? Does four divide into negative 32 without a remainder? Yeah, it's four times negative eight. And guess what? Four plus negative eight is exactly what we were hoping for. That gives me the negative four. So what does that say in, in line of uh, how exactly this factors? This basically tells you that these are the two constants that you want to use. And your factorization would be x plus 4 times x minus 8. x is in the first two positions in the binomials, and these two numbers you chose in the second. By the way, the order doesn't matter, so if you wrote this, but someone else wrote this, it wouldn't matter at all, because the commutative property tells me that I can reverse the multiplication. Now, it's not at all a bad idea to check to make sure that you factored this correctly. We can always check a factorization by multiplication. Let's try that here. So to check this, what we would want to do is we would want to multiply the x minus 8 times the x plus 4 using the FOIL rule. And let's see if we get what we were supposed to start with. So the product of the first terms would be x squared. The product of the outside terms, the O, that would be the 4 and the x. The product of the inside terms would be negative 8 times x. And the product of the last terms would be negative 8 times 4, which is negative 32. Oh, let me stay color consistent here negative 32. Combining the terms in the middle, we would get x squared minus 4x minus 32. Is that what I wanted? It is. Okay, so that means that we have factored that correctly. Let's do another example and see what happens there. So my next example that I want to do, we're going to try to factor uh, x squared plus 7x plus 8. So thinking about my hint, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 8, and the sum of those factors should give me 7. Now, to get a product of 8, I would need two numbers with the same sign, either two positive numbers or two negative numbers. What I'm going to do is look at the middle term and realize that for the middle term to be positive, I'd have to be adding two positive numbers if they're going to have the same sign. So when I think about the factors of 8, I'm going to focus all my attention on picking two positive numbers and seeing if I can get them to add up to 7. Like last time, let's start at the very bottom and check the lowest possible uh, integer, which is 1. And we ask ourselves, is 1 a factor of 8? Is Does 1 divide evenly into 8? 1 times what equals 8? 1 times 8 is equal to 8. So the factors of 8, or a fact, pair of factors of 8, are 1 and 8. Does that give me the right sum? Well, 1 plus 8 is equal to 9. So that's not the right one. But we've learned not to be you know, too discouraged to begin with, so we try 2, and we ask ourselves, uh, is, yeah, ask ourselves, is 2 a factor of 8? Does 2 divide into 8 without a remainder? Yes, in fact, 2 times 4 would give me 8, and 2 plus 4 gives me 6. So again, that's not the right one, but again, we know not to get discouraged. We, we try 3, but 3 doesn't go into 8. Mm, so we just skip down to 4. Uh, now, 4 times 2 is, gives me 8. And if you look at what's happening here, I've already checked that. It's just the reverse order. Once you see that happening, when you begin to see the repeats, you really know that you've checked everything that's possible. 
4 plus 2 is still 6. And if you were to bother to keep going, you would try 5. 5 doesn't go into 8. 6. 6 doesn't go into 8. 7. 7 doesn't go into 8. 8 does. It would be 8 times 1, but again, we've checked that one as well. So what happens if you've checked every possibility, every possible pair of numbers that multiplies to 8 and they never add up to the 7 that you get in the middle? Well, the fact of the matter is that there are polynomials that do not factor, and this is one of them. The word we use for this, for this is prime. We say this is a prime polynomial. You might remember from more basic mathematics that uh, a prime number was a number uh, that only factors as one times itself. Uh, prime polynomial, very much the same way. It doesn't factor except as one times itself. Um, now, it does turn out, what I really should say well, for uh, in defining a prime polynomial is that it is a polynomial that doesn't factor using real numbers. Now, this will feel or hear, sound bizarre, but later in the course, we'll actually look at factoring polynomials using complex numbers. That is way over where we want to be for right now. So for the time being, because this uh, polynomial does not factor using real numbers, we're just going to say, hey, it's a prime polynomial, and we're going to leave it be. Let's look at another one, see if this one's prime or not. Uh, let's factor a squared minus 17ab plus 30b squared. As you noted in the other video, you can have more than one variable in a polynomial. Uh, to get the b squared in the final term, that tells you that your polynomial is going to have to factor something like a plus something b. There's going to have to be a b as the second term of these poly uh, binomials in order to get the b squared going. So that's a slight change, but basically nothing changes in how you decide what uh, coefficients or numbers to choose. You are still looking for two numbers that multiply to give you 30, so you want to think about factors of 30. And then you want to look at the sum of the factors because you're hoping to get the negative 17 that's in the B position, the middle position. Now, like the previous example, the final coefficient is positive, but if I choose two positive numbers, I'll never get a negative number for a sum in the middle. That's okay. Uh, I can multiply two negative numbers, and that would also give me a positive number. So what this is just saying is that I need to look at two negative numbers. So I'm going to consider that as I look at my factors, but again, I'm going to start at the bottom by looking at negative 1. Unless, of course, you just immediately see, oh, I see what combination to use. If so, go for it. But if you don't, start with negative 1. Negative 1 times what gives me positive 30? Well, that would be negative 30. We add those together, and we plainly see that that does not give me negative 17. No big deal. We move on to 2, but again, make it negative. Negative 2 times what gives me negative 30? Negative 2 times negative 15? Oh, look how, look how good this is. On the second try, we get the one that works. We have gotten it. That is great. If that had not worked, we would go on to negative 3, negative 3 times negative 10, for example, and we could keep on going until we find, hopefully, a combination that will give me a sum of negative 17, but we found it pretty fast, and so I'm pretty happy. What that tells me is that the factorization of this polynomial should be a minus 2b times a minus 15b. And again, we can check that. Good idea, especially at the beginning. Um, product of the first terms would be a squared. That's my first terms. Uh, product of the outside terms 
the a times negative 15b, that'd be negative 15ab, okay? Product of the inside terms, uh, negative 2ab. Uh, you can see right there, that's going to give me negative 17ab. Let's just check the last term. Uh, negative 2b times negative 15b, negative times negative is positive. That gives me a 30b squared. That's perfect. So that is exactly the right factorization right there. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, let's see. Let's do this one. Let's factor, as my example, factor uh, x squared plus 29x minus 75. We would be looking for two numbers whose product is negative 75. Okay, I'm already getting a little nervous because that's a rather complicated number. And then we want to look at the sum of the factors in hopes of getting the positive 29. Let's talk strategy. So, to get a product of negative 75, one of my two numbers will have to be positive and the other one will have to be negative. To get the positive middle term, the number that's larger in absolute value will have to be the positive one. The number that's smaller will have to be the negative one. So when I start again at the bottom, I'm going to let my small numbers, because I'm looking at the small one first, be negative. And to get a product of negative 75, my next number would have to be positive 75. So negative, negative 1 and positive 75. That will definitely assure that the sum is positive, but is it the right thing? Negative 1 plus 75, um, that's 74, and that's nowhere near right. So that's okay. We just keep moving. Uh, we try negative 2, but uh, because the 75 is odd, we can see that negative 2 is not going to be a factor of uh, negative 75, so we skip over that one. Negative 3 is worth a try. Negative 3 times 25. That would be negative 75. Does that add up to the right thing, though? Uh, closer, but it's 22, so that's not, not great. We try negative 4, um, but 4 doesn't divide into 75. So we move on to negative 5. Now, this will work. Uh, negative 5 times a positive 15 would give me a negative 75. That's a good one. Uh, again, the number of facts are kind of important here. Uh, you might need a calculator at least to get started until you build your confidence. Negative 5 plus 15 gives me a sum of 10, though, so that's not the right one. That's all right. We'll just keep going. So we try negative 6, but 6 doesn't go into 75. Okay, we try 7. 7 doesn't go into 75. Negative 8. Well, 8 doesn't go into 75. Negative 9. 9 doesn't go into 75. Negative 10. Well, that doesn't work. Negative 11. No. Negative 12. No. Negative 13. No. Negative 14. No. Well, negative 15. But I'm pretty sure that's not going to work uh, because the it would have to be negative 15 times positive 5. At this point, my first my my first number, my negative number, is larger in absolute value. All of my sums now are going to turn out negative. Negative 15 plus 5 is negative 10. In fact, you can kind of guess what's going to happen. You're going to get basically a repeat of the numbers up above here, but instead of giving you positive sums, they're going to give you negative sums, and that's even worse. Well, we try all the options. None of them work. That means we have another example of a prime polynomial. So I hope these extra examples have been helpful. Thanks.